Oh, Mitako Oyase. All my relations. I want to, uh, first of all, I want to give thanks once again to the Wakantanka uh, Tunkashira of the Great Spirit. And uh, I also want to extend my thanks out to each and every one of you that have joined us here uh, tonight. And <clears throat> I want to share with you a short version of my spiritual well-being, the history of where I, my, I am with my health today and my family. And so um, throughout the many years that uh, me and my wife here, Chotewa Shtewi, have been involved in uh, many different uh, healing programs, healing ceremonies, and all about uh, healing. And <clears throat> there were many, many difficulties, many struggles, and uh, uh, many things that we had overcome together. And in a time of uh, over 40, 50 years ago, there was an extreme poverty that uh, existed among our people. This was before food stamps, before uh, all of these government programs. Me and Chante Washtewe, we overcame some very struggles in our life. And in fact, the first year that we spent together with Wambreje, our oldest son, who's a, a spiritual leader, a healer today, medicine man. The first year that we spent was inside of a, a army tent during the winter. This was the, uh, but we were happy and we were healthy. And we were with my father and my mother at that time, camped behind their home. Such was the extreme poverty that we faced in those times. And hunting was a way of life, growing food. God, my mother had huge gardens and <clears throat> hunting and Fishing was a way of life to provide food for our people. And, and so, and then we, we overcame together. I uh, want to make it clear that Chante uh, Vashtiwi, when I first married her, she was always strong in her culture, language, tradition. And all the time that I would see her, she would be sitting with all these grandmothers. She would be the only young one there with all these grandmothers. And back in those days, the grandmothers wore shawls and they couldn't speak English. And they would be all sitting under this tree. And, <clears throat> and so uh, she was always, involved in, in her culture. And she inspired me uh, when I married her. So then, you know, she never ever touched alcohol. And she never ever touched the pejuta. Although she knows you know, the sacredness of it. And she never touched drugs in her life. And, and uh, but she, she helped me overcome my struggles with alcohol, drugs. She, out, she stood with me through a, a time when there were great 
discriminatory racism that we faced and we overcame. And we raised a family and trying to keep all of our children close to the circle, close to the fire, the light. And, and then we overcame cancer. There were times in, uh, in experience of, uh, of great suffering. And, but she, all, together with family support, Indian medicine, she was able to overcome and be with us here today. And then we overcame many other struggles. And, and so I can truly call her a humanitarian because of all the work and all the contribution that she had made just uh, to name but a few she was, she revived the culture, many of which you are benefiting from today. She raised a medicine man, a chief and pipe carriers. And we know the sacredness, the songs, never forgot the teachings. And so she is, she done uh, a curriculum for educational healing. And she contributed to a preservation of star knowledge. Many of her, her uh, elders participate. She went to college and she took care of the elderly. And many of this was all humanitarian work. She got paid for all the, all the things that she contributed to in which many, many people are benefiting from now. And, and so Chantel Washtewe, you know, is uh, one of the reasons that, uh, that we're here today. And I have uh, a great, I love and a great uh, teaching that I learned from being with her in uh, 47 years now of our life together. And so <clears throat> it was this time that, you know, we went, as I've said, we went through many health struggles. We went through many struggles in our in our life together and we stood strong with each other and and I, I also want to thank tonight here you know all my my daughters and my my daughter-in-laws and my my adopted daughters and my daughter's daughters you know for all the the work and all the effort that they put into Chantepat. And as a result, we are seeing and we are believing how the, the nutrients, the, the superfoods, how they are they're helping us today. So I want to thank Jitkalo uh, Hovashtewi. Naiva, you know, for all the, we've learned so much in this training and how this, how this system is working. We want to learn more about the supplements because we're seeing the results. And, <clears throat> and I want to also give a special, special thanks here tonight for, uh, for a friend of mine, a long time friend of mine, David and 
as I've said before, we had the honor of, of being a part of David and Annie's marriage ceremony through the sacred pipe. And uh, I wanna recognize and acknowledge this man because he does also humanitarian work. And <clears throat> years ago, 20 years ago, he was able to supply our village with sanitary, sanitary water nutrients. He, he uh, made efforts to help in protecting the water. I mean, that's why Native Spring Oasis is protected to this day, the water there because of this man, a water protector. And so humanitarian uh, people who do humanitarian work, to be successful at something that you do so well and that you can turn around and help someone that has been disadvantaged, that has been taken advantage as Native American people in this country today, you know all, you all know. And yet there are star people like, like David and doing this kind of humanitarian work to share a little bit of his success with someone so beautiful as Chantewa Shewi and her efforts. So as you see, they're joining forces. They're joining forces in this partnership because there's a crisis. There's a crisis going on right now among our people, health-wise. And so <clears throat> I went through a little bit of a experience just a month ago. I, I couldn't get out of bed, there's something wrong. So I went in and had myself checked out and they, to a CAT scan, uh, my doctor found uh, on my liver And, but I kept taking the, the nutrients and I have medical proof for this. And my daughter knows, my son, and my daughters know. And so I went in a few weeks later for a, a MRI. Magnetic imaging radi radiology. And they found that this tumor had shrunk to only the size of a centimeter. And so that's uh, for those that you know go by medical data proof, you, know, you have to see to believe. You know, and and so I'm very thankful. And, <clears throat> and in the last few months, that we've, me and Chantewa we've been taking the, the superfoods, you know. Uh, we have more strength, our digestive system. And, <clears throat> and we're so much more active. And, <clears throat> And so uh, that's, uh, I have the medical data to prove. And so that's why I look forward now uh, to my life and building this partnership stronger and sharing uh, this with the world. And, <clears throat> and also sharing Chantewash uh, Dewey's vision and dream of helping her people get well. And 
and <clears throat> have clean water, clean food for the future. There's so many things and so much work. And for all of my relatives to understand and educate yourself to the bigger picture of her vision about not only healing our bodies, but healing the earth, the water, the soil. And many years ago when Chantevashtem and me, we took a great risk. We took a great challenge and we, we left the reservation and we went on a great hunt, on a, a great hunt. And uh, <clears throat> not only just for our family, but as you all know, and, and call me a chief, but there's responsibility that comes with that. And so we're not out here just looking for a job. Although I want to commend all of my children who have taken this risk and this journey with me on this great hunt for all the, the work that you've done to sustain yourselves economically. But remember, we're on a great hunt here. We have mandate from our nation, the Sichonghu or Lakota Oyate. One of those mandates as a spiritual leader is you have to ensure the health. You have to ensure the rights of your people. You have to sustain and make a plan for their sustainability. There is so much responsibility that comes with being a leader today. Especially when we hunted buffalo back in those times. But now we have to hunt for the knowledge. We have to hunt the medicine. That's gonna make our people strong. So all that we have learned and all that we have done and that we are doing together as a team, I'm proud of each and every one of you. And I want to all remind you of all of the bigger picture and the mandates that we have as caretakers of this earth, guardians of this earth now, you have treaties with the United States government as a mandate, we have responsibilities to our, to our people. And so following Chantewa Shtewi's dream and her vision is fulfilling those mandates, fulfilling those, it, original instructions given in the beginning of time. Because now that's our responsibility to take care of the earth, to take care of her. And if we all have done a little bit of humanitarian work in our lives, and there was a greater a greater result, there's solutions that wait for us at the end of the day. And so there is so much to share, there is so much to teach in a so short of a time. And so me and Chantewashti, Chantewashti, we were at our, at our final fourth phase in our life for grandparents great grandparents. And so we want to fulfill our, our purpose and 
the dream that she has for her people. This dream will never die. Thank you for all for listening. And thank you for all for all the, the prayers. And <clears throat> thank you so much for all the good thoughts that you have given. And David, if you can hear this message, this voice, Naiva, I let this sage here tonight that it might rise and go to the four winds and bring us all together again. Oh, Mitako Oyasu.